Smoke it till it's stupid state, stay until it's late Sweet like chocolate cake, part just like the shit I roll off paper plates Search for sweet escape because inside I feel I'm dying slow I tell you all that what is happening in my dogs? My name is Madison and I'm the Auction Dog and today I'm coming to you with a video that I didn't really want to make nor plan to make but I'm gonna make because this is a very common problem that we're having with these E46 convertibles and it's happened to me now again on my third car and so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys how I actually repair this common problem and kind of what happens with it and uh, how I found to fix it because the way that you're supposed to fix it is very expensive and laborious and then you have to take a lot of parts of like a lot of pieces apart and then reassemble everything and kind of get it all calibrate properly or you can do it this way and it tends to actually repair the problem without having to necessarily disassemble everything. So the issue that I'm talking about is when these front latches, the latches that hold the top down to the actual window frame break. And so this, I'm filming this video well this intro right now after I have already repaired it because the original intro that I filmed for some reason had no audio so i want to redo this for you guys so you at least want to know what i'm talking about and you can see you know at least have a baseline to, to understand where i'm coming from to the next clip when it's all disassembled so uh these these latches have basically a worm gear inside of them that runs here on both sides and there's a little plastic holder that runs up and down the worm gear and actuates this latch to lock and close like that and uh over time that that plastic just disintegrates basically and it no longer functions and now this is the third car that this has happened to me on and i didn't know i mean they're all the same whether they be an m car or a non-m car whatever else they all actually function the same way and they all are going to have this problem eventually so what i tend to do and i found that actually works is if you catch it early enough the plastic's not like completely disintegrated on the inside of it and so you can disassemble this this piece here and take this cover off and take that little take that plastic carrier and you bolt it back together around the metal rod that runs through it and it actually begins to function again and it actually works really well so um in this video i show you guys kind of how i go about the process of getting to it or getting there to that point of actually doing the repair and then reassembling and then testing and make sure it works so the next clip that you're going to see is with this convertible top disassembled uh this cover comes off and that's really the only part that you need to remove from the entire assembly of the car or the entire convertible top assembly there's there's three here there's actually three um torx bits that torx sizes that you need a t10 t20 and a t27 or a t30 i believe it's a t27 and uh the t10s and the t10s are for under here there's a t10 there t10 here there's a seven millimeter right here under this little black cap. And that will, and there, I believe there's six or seven of them up front. And then the two sevens on both sides. The T20 is for the inside of here. See, there's actually a, a bolt right there. I don't know if you can see it or rather a screw that holds the convert, the actual uh, cloth there on the inside of the convertible top. The T30s are for the inside, or the T20 sevens are for the inside of there. I don't know if you can see that. There's two screw. There's two uh, screws there. One here and one there. And then, if you can see on the tops, on the top here, there's divots or little rather dimples. Every time there's a screw under here, so you'll stick your arm inside of here with a quarter inch ratchet and that T and that T20, and there's screws inside of here. And uh, they're on top of like the insulation layer, and it's kind of hard to film that, but these you don't take out completely you just turn them uh, enough to where this plastic cover will slide down and out and it's really after, after that it's really quite easy and then once you get this off there's another screw inside of there that's a t20 as well so i want to say it's like maybe 20 20 screws and, and uh 20 20 fasteners in total that will remove that black plastic cover and then you get to this, uh, you get to the mechanism that actually works. And like I said, there's one on both sides. And then when you, when uh, the next clip that you'll see, you'll get a better idea of what I'm talking about. And uh, this isn't really a guide or a walkthrough rather. And I'm not really telling you, I'm not telling you this is the correct way to fix it because it really isn't. You know, in reality, you should replace everything, but they don't change anything with the updated part. Nothing's different. It's just a new part. And yes, I mind you, it did last 18 years, but you're going to have the issue again eventually. I just kind of do this. And all I and actually the assemblies are quite expensive. I want to say they're like four to six hundred dollars. I fixed this for like forty bucks, and that or maybe even less. I think it's like a pack of JB Weld 
eight bucks and then enough fasteners to get it repaired, which is like four um, small screws and four small nuts and bolts. Very simple and some washers. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. The next, like I said, the next clip that you're gonna see is with this thing already disassembled. And me kind of walking you through how I actually go about drilling the holes in the carriers, installing the nuts and bolts, and then JB welding it all back together. So let's get it cracking. Okay, so now you can see that that's all apart up here. And you can kind of see where the damage is coming from here. So this one's about to break. You see how it's all cracked? And, but this side is not currently broken. That side is. That side is. And so we're going to come around here and check this out. It's not, luckily, there's still some meat left on the freaking plastic parts here. So I can likely repair it. But I don't know if that's coming in. You see how this, this these should be aligned like that. Like this should be aligned here. And it ain't like at all. You know what I'm saying? So that's really where we're at right now. I gotta kinda kinda get that, that thing in a better position here and get it to be aligned. And then we'll be uh, be better off. But <sighs> this whole thing is just a freaking stupid design that they came up with that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Like why would you make this carrier out of plastic? It breaks on every E46 that I've ever had ever in my life. And so it's just kind of a bitch to have to pull all this whole thing apart to fix it. But this is what you have to deal with. So, what the gist of this whole thing is, this repair, right, is, and I'm kind of shooting in a weird the time of day where the sun's like almost right over me, but you see how that piece of metal in there has a, has a hole in the center? Okay. That's really what they use to bond this plastic. So what I do is I fill this whole thing up with JB Weld. Okay, and JB Weld these two pieces back together, really. And then I uh, will put a, I'll drill out small holes for screws through those and I'll screw the thing together too and just bond the whole thing real tight. So what I'm gonna do currently is I'm gonna get these to realign by manipulating the top. There's this latch in here that kind of presents to be an issue because you need to get it around this uh, little rod there. And in order to do that, you kind of got to mess with this whole mechanism to get everything back in alignment. And that's why the top won't won't close or anything like this, and it won't even get down to a point where you can realign it, but or reset the top. But uh, I don't like di like disengaging the top while I'm doing this because I can still move this around currently, and gotta get it all back in synchrony, which is what needs to happen in order for it to be where it needs to be. So I'm gonna move this thing around here. My other camera is about to die, so I'm gonna set this one up and kind of make it work. But uh. I just want to show you guys kind of how I get this done because it's not the easiest thing in the world. It really isn't. And frankly, this isn't the right way to fix it. You should be ordering a new piece here. But then you have to order the whole mechanism and it's like a $600 repair. And I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it for something that's just going to break again because they never actually repaired or fixed this issue. So, let's get cracking. So, I don't know if you guys saw that there, but you kind of just have to move this around until you can get it in a position where you can open it up, right, and kind of just slide it back together. So, now that I have it here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to JB weld the shit out of this one and that one too, because that one's cracking. Even though it's not broken yet, it's going to break. So, to get all that crap out, I'm going to get some drill bits out, because you've got to drill it from this way, slowly and get it to freaking bite in there, right? And uh, you can see how there's like two pockets and they're, they're, really I think that I bought screws that are gonna be way too big for what I'm doing here. So I'm likely gonna have to go back and return them and buy more shit that I just spent $25 on because I forgot what size freaking screws we needed, but I'll point those out and show you guys when we do it. But uh, I don't drill huge holes here, not huge ones. 
because I don't want to compromise everything else once we drill it all, once we glue it all back together. So it's going to be quite the ordeal to get this all done here. I'm looking forward to that. But that one was about to let go too, which is crazy. You know, I'm glad that that one did not let go, frankly, because then we would have a real debacle. But like, look down here, look at this. Wow, look at that. That's bad. I'm surprised this side even works still. Oh, look at that. Look at that plastic's just out completely from where it needs to be. Look at that. Insane. Okay. That's going to suck to fix because there's no meat to drill into here. So that one's going to suck to fix. It's probably just wedged in there. That's why it's like that. So fantastic. Let me realign this one too. All right. So now I just realigned that piece there. Got, <coughs> excuse me, got that piece of plastic go to go back into this clip here, which this literally had pieces of threading on the backside of it. Like that's what they used to help the, this is so stupid. This is such a dumb design. It does not make any sense. I don't know why they did this. I love BMWs. Don't get me wrong. I love, this is my dream car. That's my E36 M3 over here. This is my five series touring here. I love these cars, but boy, they, they could have been so much better if they didn't make so many crucial parts out of plastic. It just does not make sense because that's where they all break. It's like, just spend a little bit. I don't, they're, they're not cheap cars. Why are we making so many imperative, some really important parts, frankly, parts out of these freaking out of plastic? It's so stupid. Like, as if that was supposed to hold up over being opened and closed through the lifetime of the car. This car is nearly 20 years old. Why? Why would they do that? Now, to fix this properly, you're supposed to go out and spend all of this money on a brand new mechanism, reinstall the motor. It's like hundreds of dollars to repair it. Nope, not doing it, not doing it. So, what do we got here? Sorry, there's water bottles and shit in here. All right, I got my JB Weld. And I bought various types of hardware here, none of which will likely work. So, unless I can drill it the other way, which I don't know if that'll work either. I gotta look at, I gotta kind of figure it out, but I think I bought hardware that's too long. You know what I'm saying? We will double check while I open this. Probably should have done it on. I hate filming stuff by myself and especially when my camera with the tripod's broken. Oh, I think I might have gotten lucky here. Hold on. So, oh yeah, we're gonna be. Whoop. We're gonna be gravy here. Oh yeah, we're gravy. So, it's like a pan head machine screw. See that? And I don't even know if that would consider be like be considered a pan head, just due to what the size of it, like that, you know. But long story short, the reason I got this is because they have a high flange. So maybe they're high flange pan head screws or machine screws. And I buy small um, nuts for them and washers for the backside. So the idea is. And I bought a little bit longer ones just in case I needed them, which those might be too long, frankly. So, okay. So I got four and then four, okay, cool. So the idea of this is, is you drill a hole out in these things from this side, and then you stick this machine screw in from this side, like that. Or you can even do it from this side, depending on how much room you got and these might literally be just perfect which would be fantastic if these worked perfectly and i want to say I, I have to measure them for you but they're likely an inch maybe less let me double check i'll measure them for you before i put them all in and we'll figure that out um it, just to make sure you guys get the right stuff if you end up doing it this way i'm not liable for anything you do ever you know i'm just showing you how i do it because i've had to kind of I looked and there were some people that showed that talked about how to repair these things online but i've had to do it now this is the third time i've had to do it for a convertible and the other two times did work successfully and as far as i know the people are still doing fine with them uh because i ended up selling those cars on and so i think this is a pretty solid repair and it'll, it'll at least get you a few years i would imagine you know down the road and hopefully this doesn't ever happen again jb well it's pretty hard honestly it gets to be pretty pretty hard so it's easy to use for this kind of stuff and uh yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get get cracking. I'm gonna mix this thing up. 
drill i'm gonna probably drill these holes first because then i could fill the hole with jb weld too and all kinds of shit and yeah sweet so let me go ahead and oh, i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get my drill set up going here i put a drill bit into my impact too my bit driver or my drill driver here my driver right and that's how i do it because i don't i don't like breaking out those giant drills and stuff and this works pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and get all the setup that I'm gonna that I need, and then I'll get back with you guys and show you what I'm using to get this done. So I'm at the point now in this where we kind of have to play, play the old waiting game because I want all this JB weld to set up properly before I put the cover back on just to make sure everything's good to go and that you, you operate it, long story short, like this. Make sure it works before you put the cover back on because it's kind of a bitch to get it off and on. It's kind of crappy to get it off and on. But this side didn't really come out as good as I wanted it to and I had to actually use a, set, a different screw, a longer one that I had because I went and got two different lengths. So... What's up, dude? A little bit of backstory of how this one went here. This side over here came out perfect. So there's two uh, screws that I put. It's a nut and a bolt, really, that I put through this carrier here. And I've JB welded it back together. JB was never the smoothest thing in the world, but it's going to be holding really well. And so those are both drilled through not only the carrier, but that steel rod in there. And I actually didn't go through that little plastic hole in the center i went through um the metal rod lower a little bit lower than that this is a 964 drill bit okay so get a screw or a bolt rather it's basically the same size like that okay i measured them they're they're inch they're one inch they're one inch bolts these are inch and a quarter that's i bought three of each or four of each just to make sure i had the right stuff and that one that one actually worked out really well so this one this side's perfect basically and those are all bonded but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna wait for this to cure overnight and then uh kind of come back to it in the morning and we will see exactly what we're working with and whether or not i was able to fix this thing and get it to work again i'm pretty sure it's gonna i'll be i know that it'll be fine to get it to go ahead and get working again but like I said, I'm just going to wait for it to cure overnight so that I'm sure that we got a good little thing going on here. So, that kind of leaves us to have to wait till overnight. So, it's about 5.30 now. This It says to wait six hours. It'll be 11 o'clock by then. You guys know how that one goes. So, I'll catch up with you in the morning and then we'll come back out here and uh, see if it worked or not. So, uh, so, I wanted to show you guys this too because I got a video coming out to finalizing this build it needs to be painted still but this e36 m3 has come along and it's looking sick right now so the ssrs in the rear are perfectly fitted both of them fit, fit really good got the ltw wing on this needs the car needs to be painted obviously but look at the ssrs dude lip defender 17 by nine and a half in the rear plus three and 17 by eight and a half in the front plus 10 i think but they fit so good lip to fender as real deal OG SSR Professor SP1s. 
gangster. So gangster. The car looks so sick. Like, the profile of it looks so good. And I know there's shit everywhere because I'm in the middle of working on a bunch of stuff. And I had to use all of this to cover up the convertible top while that car was sitting last night. Because I got home late while it was broken. I just wrapped up the install of these uh, metal door panels. And you can see I wrapped the top with foam. Bought it with foam again. And just did a gray suede. That side's done too. So this car's really starting to come together. And there will be a video. If you watch the channel and you like BMWs, um, this car, I'll have a video coming out on this car next week. And this one is really, really sweet, dude. This thing's sweet, so. And then I also got a video for Meekum, from my Meekum visit coming out probably tomorrow. I think before this one. So this, I think this video will come out on Wednesday, or Friday. And that one's gonna come out on Tuesday, or Monday, Wednesday, so. Yeah, anyways, I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, so, brand new day. And this is all hard in here, so this is good to go. That other side's not as pretty, but this all came out pretty good. So this is all freaking rock hard in there. And uh, time to test it. See if we fixed it or not. I have a feeling we did, so. We will see how we're gonna do here. Yeah. That looks good. It's kind of soft, actually. That's kind of weird. I wonder if it was because it was cold last night or something. That's odd. Okay. Let's see if it closes or not. Normally, JB, JB Weld fucking... Or JB Weld goes rock hard. Normally, so that's kind of... Oh, damn it. Dang it all the frick. Alright, let's test to see if this thing works or not. Nice and tight. There you go. So let's open her back up. There you go. Nice. All right, I'm gonna reinstall this thing. We're done. To get, we're ready to go. Sweet. So that all held up real good. And that's all you really got to do. You see how I just screwed these two bolts, two screws in there, two bolts, two nuts on the back side. You know. 964th drill bit through it, through the metal, through the plastic. JB welded those two clamps back together. And, uh, or the, J, JB welded those two pieces of that back together. And it worked out perfectly. Dang it, there's a bunch of metal in my seat and stuff. I gotta go vacuum all that out. But, nonetheless, this all, uh, this all went really well. So, I don't know if you can get a good look at that there. This one's not perfect. I actually tried to drill it out, drill one through here, and then pound the bolt through, and it broke it off in there, so I had to drill a hole right slightly below it. But that, that other side came out perfect. But nonetheless, this is repaired, and it will work fine like this for quite a while. I've never had one break again on me, which is good. So if you guys do, I'm going to put this back together, and I'm sure, actually, you know what? I'm going to show you how to do that, too. Let's do that. So uh, first and foremost, with this cover, you kind of just have to get it, because if you remember from the video, these screws are not all out in here. So this is all still attached. So all you really gotta do is kinda just take this and wedge it up in there. And I'm gonna, let me get this camera set up, camera angle set up and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so my drill actually is working. So I'm kind of getting this all put together and I've been finding all the parts that, and pieces that I needed here. So I love just putting my shit in random pl random places, I guess, when I'm done with my jobs. At least I'm halfway done with them. So that, yeah, you know, you leave your stuff out because you're like, I'm gonna need this again. And then you're just like, oh, let me, let me go ahead and misplace it. Make it nice and easy for yourself. So you just gotta be really careful when you're reinstalling all this, all these little tiny, you know, screws and bits and stuff because just, it can be it can be a problem for you if you if you're not you know so 
The only thing that I gotta do over there, a little bit back in, so I kinda just go through and hand thread all this stuff to begin with. Because I don't wanna strip anything out or have any problems with anything down the line. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that would not be great. Okay. Why do we have one extra screw? Oh, that's why. It's on that side. Okay. So, with these two, because you have the screws, in, the bolts inside of there. Oh, I was like, oh shit, it fell out. It's actually in there. Okay. Um, with this, you, it's kind of a pain to get these to be right. So really all I do is just kind of pull it back, pull the screw out, and use the the uh, use the use Torx bit to just kind of shove it in there and get it to turn. And uh, yeah, let me go ahead and set this up and we can do a little montage when we're finishing this up here. And there you have it. So now that cover's tight. I'm gonna close this and let it sit closed for probably a couple days just to make sure that that thing is cured properly and uh, that we're not gonna have any issues going forward. Like I said, I've never had one of these break again, but I've also never kept a car super long afterwards. So it may very well happen, but this is a common, pro common practice in order to fix these convertible tops. And it's definitely not the right way to do it. The right way to do it would be to go order that from BMW and spend $600 or $700 on those and then have it break again in a few more years or whatever else. And, you know, you're kind of stuck in the same boat. If you don't want to do that, kind of like me, then I didn't do that. And I probably spent a whole lot less time doing this than I would have replacing that entire mechanism. And it's just kind of a laborious thing for no reason. So I probably spent, I don't know, $10 on hardware and maybe another, t another 18 bucks on JB Weld and... Uh, like I said, it's a 964 drill bit. The hardware is about the same size, so 964 and just get a little, just get them with a little pan head, an inch, an inch bolts, little pan head, a nut, um, uh, and a nut on the back side with a washer, and you're good to go. JB weld the thing tight, and uh, yeah, and then cut it loose. And if you guys do have any questions about how I did this, kind of the thought process behind it, please drop a comment down below. Let me know if you know a better way to do this. If you do. Please share it with everybody else because this is super common. Every E46 convertible is going to have this happen to it eventually. Every single one. I've owned plenty of them. And this is the only one that I ever got away with this not happening was my black CHP. Other than that, it happened on my M3. It's happened on base three series. It's happened on every single car that I've ever owned. That That is a convertible. And I love these cars. I love dropping the tops on them. They're great. But very common failure point. And this is how I remedy it. So it's it's just, like I said, it's super, super easy. And just to recap, all I use is a quarter inch socket. I got a T10 on here. Nope, T20. Got a T10 over here, right? T10, yep. And a T27, but it could, I, it's, I use a T27, it might be T30, but that one worked for me. And I have a, a little, you know, a, a Phillips, Phillips bit for my driver as well. And we're good to go.
And I used it, like I said, a 964 drill bit to drill those holes. And you just kind of kind of keep them a little low, so you're able to put a bolt through the backside of that that uh that really it's a worm gear is what it is. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, like I said, drop a comment down below. If you like this solution, maybe give, maybe consider giving the, giving a thumbs up to the video. And uh, if you like BMWs, consider subscribing. Like I said earlier, I got a video coming out with my Estoril here. It's slammed on SSRs, OG SSR uh, Professor SP1s. And th that's going to be a really sick video. This car is for sale right now. This is my E39 Touring. It's on MK Motorsport wheels. It's kind of dirty right now because I've been using it as a daily. And now at least coolant, so I'm going to have to fix that. And I'll probably put that on camera too because it's in a common, really, a really common uh, leak, leak point for these cars. And this is a 525, so the M52 or M54, M52, I think it's an M52. I'd have to double check. But there's plastic cooling pipes that run under the intake. I've already replaced them once, but I believe they're leaking again. So that's going to be fun. And this is my M3. I got a video coming out with my, because with, this, is, this was my ultimate dream car. I always wanted one of these, and uh, I have it now, which is really sweet. And I got a video coming out with my review of it. I've owned it for about two months now. I bought it out of the auctions. I'm a dealer here down in Florida. And uh, I'm going to drop a little video with my review of the car and whether or not it actually lived up to the hype that I thought it was going to. Because I've owned, I've owned a bunch of E36 M3s, but I've always wanted one of these. And it really fulfilled, you know, a good part of me to be able to own one of these one day. And it's like I said, I'm a, I'm a small dealer down here in South Florida. I specialize in selling the dream to people. Honestly, I buy a lot of enthusiast based vehicles and sell them all over the place. We did 36 cars last year and this year we plan on doing 50. So it's going to be a busy year and uh, I'm really stoked for it. And I'm stoked to bring you guys along with me. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you've watched this far, like I said, please subscribe. If you want to go ahead and keep up with the BMW content that we're going to be dropping on this channel and peace out my dogs. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you.